Hello, everyone. Ooh, back this up a little bit. All right, there we go. Hello, and welcome to 8-Bit Adventures Art Night, or the 8-Bit Art Stream. Uh, so, we are going to be doing some artwork, and the viewers of this stream are going to get a little bit of a sneak peek because uh, this is going to be for some patrons only artwork. There we go. So this is going to be artwork that's normally reserved for patrons only. Uh, and yeah, so, um, so in order to, you know, view the finished piece in its, you know, actual JPEG format, um, you can become a patron right here, patreon.com slash 8 adventures. So, but this is to give an idea as to one of the benefits, uh, that you can get for being a patron, um, and that is... Uh, seeing, it's it's a little like single panel comic series that's done weekly uh, called Turtle and Terrier Private Eyes, which is um, about my dog. <laughs> so, uh, so we are going to be doing some artwork of of uh, Chief Dog Officer Monty, who is uh, in charge of all of our canine matters here at Eight Bit Adventures. So. Um, so Monty is, uh, he is a West Highland Maltese. So he's a small dog. Um, and so, uh, we'll start with, you know, just a little, little round head. And he's got a little, little snout. Um, and so one of the things that Monty sometimes does is he has one ear that sticks up. And then he's got one ear that folds down. Um, and his ears are pretty big. Uh, and then he's kind of got, he's kind of got little legs. A bit of a skinny dog. And this is just going to be for general guidelines. We're actually going to end up revising some of these. Uh, and he's going to be wearing a costume. So uh, the costume is going to kind of... Uh, hey, Josh. His costume is going to kind of, you know, take up some of his, his body. So, uh, and then being a Highland Maltese, he has a very big kind of floofy tail in the back. just to, to kind of give me an idea basic sketch what we're gonna do uh, then we're gonna do the actual the actual sketching but uh, with this we're actually gonna bring this over into Illustrator So that I can do my brush work. There we go. So the reason why I'm bringing it into Illustrator is um, Photoshop is great if you want to do um, more like painting, um, and it doesn't give you very. Um, clean lines, at least not in Photoshop 3. Um, 
and uh, I find I, I have a lot of jittery lines if I'm just doing like inking uh, in Photoshop. Whereas an illustrator, you can use the brush tool, and as you can see, uh, I get very clean lines. So that's why we're going to be using uh, the Illustrator brush for this. So because he's got a big floofy tail, you just want to make it extra floofy like that. And we do, even though we uh, gave him a bit of a haircut and a trim, he's still got a little bit of a, a little bit of a shaggy face. So just some little jagged lines to kind of represent just his fur. Yeah, so, uh, so, it was actually, uh, Megan's request, um, since I think we actually have a little taco costume for him for Halloween, um, and then, you know, since it's, since it was Cinco de Mayo, uh, and we actually did, it, we had tacos last night for dinner, so we thought, uh, it would be appropriate. So I didn't sketch this out, but doing a little collar for him, um, it's pretty easy. So we got that. Um, then we're actually going to remove some of these. We're going to do his taco costume. Now, if I was doing it right, this is something that I probably should have sketched out, but tacos are easy enough. So what we can do is just remove those lines. There we go. And then since this is four, that particular comic, Monty should be wearing. So Monty also has uh, like a little Hawaiian type shirt uh, that he wears. Things are good. Yeah, uh, so the house uh, next door to us, um, just uh, they just put a for sale sign out today. Um, I didn't see it on the website, but, uh, yeah. Um, it's actually, uh, there hasn't been anyone living in there for a while. Um, so it's kind of been like uninhabited. Um, and I think it is probably valued around 125.
Um, so yeah. You do not live so far away. Well, uh, I, I don't know what to do about that. Because, I mean, I work in Pittsfield, and Megan works both in Pittsfield and in North Adams. So, uh, I mean, Lanesboro ends up being perfect for us. And even if we were to move, uh, it would likely end up being in Pittsfield. Due to stuff that we have going on. And then, um, we're actually gonna have Monty's back legs. stick out from the bottom of this taco. So, so we've got our overall taco shape, uh, but now we need some stuff to go in the taco, right? So we don't have to get very wild and crazy, uh, since we're viewing it from the side, and most of it's going to get obscured anyway. But we just want to add, you know, some stuff to represent, like, tomatoes or meat, you know, lettuce. Um, and then we just want some kind of line work just to represent, you know, like, texture on the taco. Because, I mean, most tacos don't really have um, a discernible texture. Like, they're, they're made out of, like, corn tortillas. Um, so really, like, what you're, what you're seeing is more of, like, that they have those sort of browned spots from the cooking process. Um, but, I mean, it's not like, like waffles, which have, like, the grid or... Uh, you know, like any cross hatching. Um, so we do that. Uh, so uh, to recap, you know, you just want to do little jagged lines to represent fur. And then, you know, for really furry stuff, like you can do, you know, stuff where like lines crisscross and they may not necessarily meet up. Um, and then for his little paws, uh, I just like doing kind of circular arc shapes um, and then just adding little lines here to represent his little paw toes. Um, technically, you know, if we were accurately representing Monty, he'd have like giant nails sticking out because even when he gets his nails cut, they're still uh, too long. <laughs> or at least what we consider to be too long. But um, yeah, and then, you know, what we'll do is we'll add a little thing in there like that so we've got our line work what we can do is we can select all of the lines that we created we can copy these go back to Photoshop we got this layer here that we did uh, and then we can paste it uh, we want to paste it as a smart object, so that way it scales. So uh, the way Photoshop works versus the way Illustrator works is Photoshop um, it pretty much does stuff through rasterized um, art, which means that uh, it breaks it down into pixels, right? Um, so when you like make a circle, um, it's actually like approximating the circle 
uh, using little square pixels. Whereas in Illustrator, it's doing what's known as vector art. And um, it uses uh, algorithms to calculate the path. And so the difference being is that if you were to take vector art and scale it up, um, it retains all of its shape. Whereas if you were to take a rasterized thing and, and try and blow it up, uh, it's going to look like a blurry mess. Uh, if you've ever tried to do that, where you take like an image off the internet and then you try and like blow it up to twice the size, you realize, oh, well, it doesn't look as good now. Uh, vector art will still retain uh, its fidelity. So, um, yeah. Oh, I realized that we, we forgot. We forgot a leg. So hang on. We're going to go back to Illustrator. Sorry, Monty, we forgot your, you forgot one of your legs. So uh, we're just going to have to add a little, little quick leg in here. So uh, one of the things that we can do is simply actually kind of replicate most of this leg and then just copy it over. Make it a little bit smaller. Ta-da! So then we'll copy this back over to Photoshop. All right, so now, so as you can see, unfortunately, when you put it into Photoshop, the vector art still comes out as a pix as pixel based. Um, but uh, nobody's going to be really looking at the artwork. Um, I mean, this is how it would actually show up on screen. And that looks pretty good. Um, but we want to make this color, you know? Uh, so first things first is we want to fill in our areas of black. Why? some reason, our brush was set to 50% opacity. So we got that. Monty's got brown eyes. Monty's nose isn't quite black, so we're going to use a very dark gray here. You might not be able to tell on stream, unfortunately, um, due to differences in color settings on your monitor. So, but it, it is, rest assured, it is a dark gray. I may go back and enlighten it a bit, but we're going to do pink for the inside of his little ears. Although, well, they're not really little. Poor Monty. Uh, when when he gets his hair cut, he looks like Dobby. He has very large ears in... Uh, respect to the rest of his head. And then one of his tags is green. The other one's blue. Um, his shirt, in particular, is a nice blue color with little palm trees on it. It's actually much brighter in real life and is uh, much more ornate we'll say much more detailed um there's a lot more going on but for the purposes of a cartoon like this uh and a little little comic strip like this 
um, it can be more of an approximation. So, and what we're doing right now is we're essentially applying like a base coat. If we were to if we were to do this with paint. And then once we have our complete base coat down, uh, then we'll go in and we'll start adding highlights and shadows. And uh, what you're listening to right now is this is a special playlist that I came up with for, for chill streams um, with uh, music from Game Chops, which is a music label that specifically does video game remixes. Um, they work with about two dozen different artists and uh, they actually get all the licensing squared away. So all of these tracks are fully licensed with the license holders. Um, so whether it's uh, Nintendo or other companies, um, mostly Nintendo. Uh, so that way, like all the royalties are appropriately done and everything. And uh, yeah then I'm able to play this music on the stream uh, and everybody gets um, their appropriate rights and revenue and all that stuff. All right, so we want... Yeah, we wanna make sure that we have the right color for a taco shell because we can't just do brown and like a or like a tan um we want to make sure that if especially if we want to do like a like a corn tortilla it's got to have a little bit of yellow in it this might not even be yellow anymore. might want to So a little more saturated. So this will probably work. And remember folks, by viewing the stream, you can earn pie cakes which can then be redeemed for cool things uh, like bonus art streams, uh, commissioning artwork, or if you watch enough and accumulate 100 pie cakes, uh, you can cash it in for me to go grab Monty and bring him in to say hi on stream and give him a little treat and all that stuff. We also have a bunch of special commands that, uh, there we go. 
So, uh, unfortunately, th there are two different uh, chatbots, basically, that have each have their own special set of commands. Um, but uh, you can go see which commands you can do for various chatbots. Uh, it, it works all the same, is you just put an exclamation point in front of the command word. And you can do that command. Some commands are reserved for mods, whereas some uh, can be done by anybody. Okay, so we got the taco shell. Let's add some tomatoes. And then let's uh let's add some meat. Alright, some browned meat. Which when you really think about it, like when you when you brown ground beef, it kinda turns like a grayish color. Like it's like grayish brown. Uh we'll add some lettuce up here. gaps here because uh, I don't like having gaps in my coloring. And then Monty's collar, which um, I think we just have it. It's like a neutral gray. We have like a darker gray one for his actual collar and then a lighter gray one for his Ceresto. in okay so we have our base coat now uh so in order to do highlights and shadows is we're going to, need to make two more layers in photoshop we're going to set one to multiply and we're going to set one to screen so multiply what it does is um it creates like a transparency and darkens um, like it darkens and saturates uh, stuff with that effect. Uh, whereas screen, it lightens and desaturates. Um, so as you can see, I'm on my... Uh, I guess you can't really see it all that well, but layer 7, or the current layer that I'm on right now, is our multiply screen, so we're going to use that for our shadows. And let's see. We're going to... this Right? So I have the... It's the same color, same taco color but it creates a darkened effect. Whereas if I do screen, it lightens it. So. Oh, excuse me. Case where you know we do something like this. Um, 
sometimes I'll use uh, the lasso tool and I'll set an area for me to fill in with shadows. So we can see, and I'll zoom in here. So you can see now that we have this defined shadow area. Let me share. So we're actually going to use this. Unfortunately, uh, sometimes due to my stylus's sensitivity settings, uh, the lasso sometimes behaves poorly. It does not bring joy. And so we must cast it out by the edict of Marie Kondo. Right? Is that how that goes? Does not bring joy, therefore we get rid of it. So, and then, uh, and then we can use the brush to kind of smooth out. in here so we can find all the places where we did our scribbles just add some shadows in there So you don't just have to use it for for strictly doing shadows. You can also use it to simulate texture. Now we've got our, our shadows, it's time for the highlights. A little, little spot in his nose. For the highlights, uh, I like to I like to be a little looser with them uh, and use them for texture a lot more than for our shadows. I 
just to kind of as a reminder that like you know at the end of the day it, it's it's drawing um and and to a certain extent painting um so really like at the end of the day you have license to do something with it uh that you don't necessarily have to make everything super realistic all the time um Now, here's one of the interesting things, right? So, if you do a screen on white, doesn't matter what color you have picked, it's not gonna show up. Likewise, if you do a multiply on black, because um, because screen lightens and multiply darkens, um, you're just gonna get white and black in those respective areas. Um, so, like if we wanna add little shadows here, uh, we're gonna have to So I'm going to set to a light gray. And then just do lots of little dashed lines. And then because he's got his... Uh, I don't know what the dog anatomy terminology is, but basically the equivalent of like the knee um, right there. Uh, there's going to be a little bit of a shadow there. Kind of little stuff there. We can do little ones in between each paw. And then if we really wanted to 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 showcase Monty as he is, uh, you know, we, we might also, you know, put like tear stains here or whatever and make him look really old, but you know. We we like to we like to give him a little bit of dignity. <laughs> not and not just treat him like an old man all the time. So Nah, that's too bright. We don't we we don't want that. So that's what we got for a little little taco dog. Um, so other things that we could do, uh, well, we can get rid of our sketch layer now. Um, if we wanted to, uh, sometimes I like to add a shadow. Um, I typically prefer to do uh, simple shadows. So you can do this with just a circle. You make it roughly around the area that your your character fills. That's right. So, here's why the black is showing up. We don't actually have anything filling in uh, Monty's paws. Right, we're just relying on the background. So, what we'll need to do is we're going to have to either fill it in with white or uh, we're going to have to erase those portions of the shadow. Um, or we just don't use one, you know, um, I think what might make things a little more interesting also is if we have it be like, uh, you know, maybe we do not necessarily such a dark shadow, but we do as if it were like, you know, kind of in a lighter room.
Right, so we have that. Um, but that's not really enough often. So what we'll do is uh, I often like to add a... Yeah, just like a little bit of a Gaussian blur on here. Or not sometimes. Um, yeah. This one I think actually eh, kind of works the way we have it. Um, so we can kind of do this. Move it. So we can add some text in here. You know, that just, you know, you could say just like, I want tacos. And then for speech balloons, um, what I do for both the comic and for both of the comics is um, I have a layer set up that we have a two-point stroke with black. Um, and it'll vary between like the 8-Bit Adventures comic versus uh, Turtle and Terrier. Um, and then I have uh, a rounded rectangle tool uh, that's set to 100 points. 100 pixel radius so that means it gives you really rounded corners uh the higher the radius uh, on the corners rounded it's more round um to the point that like if you set it really high uh you end up just getting circles so uh this allows me to it gives me kind of like an oblong shape um and i have it set to path mode so it won't automatically fill it in and then what we do is we select fill path and we set it to white and because it's got the stroke on there it automatically adds it so that'll give me the basic outline of the balloon itself and then we add our little tail by just using the pen tool to make like a little tail there and then we fill it in and it'll add that fill area to the balloon itself giving us that oblong shake with a little, little tail without having any issue of the background. So, um, also notice that we forgot to color in Monty's other eye. That is no good. So there we go. Easy peasy. So, uh, Yep. So that's what we have. Uh, we have our little taco monte. So, uh, any any further thoughts, questions, um, any suggestions for next time? So, um, I mean, we can certainly we got time to work on more stuff. So uh, let me save this out. Save that. Close that out, and we'll start. Uh, we'll start a new project. Not a print document. A web document. Um, and honestly, if we're just going to be doing new stuff, actually, so what we'll do is we'll just save a new. Just say, call it eight B art. And we'll just delete everything. Give us a nice little square canvas to work with, um, which works well for Instagram. So, I mean, we could do something simple. Uh, we could. How about I draw one of the characters that I'm thinking of for... So, uh, for those of you that have watched uh, the the D &D Dungeons & Dragons stream that uh, 
I do, uh, Tales of Jamora. Um, after we do the current arc, we finish the current story arc, is uh, Tuck, Matt Tucker, is going to be kind of running like a little side game on stream uh, as like a filler while we while we get the other arc set up, while I, while I figure out the next story arc, basically. So, you know, probably like four to five episodes, maybe. Um, so why don't I draw one of the characters... Uh, that I am considering playing for that. So it's a kind of a sci-fi game. Uh, oh, Granny Grindle. Hmm. Granny Grindle might be good. Yeah, so... So why don't I draw Granny Grindle, actually? Um, who uh, is a, char is a, a, a character that uh, the players have met uh, in the current story arc for Tales of Jamora. Um, she is the proprietor of an inn that also doubles as like an apothecary. And she has uh, provided some manner of goods and services to the players uh, and also uh, unsettles some of them. And uh, Give you twenty dollars sneak lit change. Jacobson's named a Grindle's plaything when he's not paying attention. Um, I wish I had control over that. Um, that stuff has to all be done pre-show um, and can't really be done on the fly um, because uh, additionally, those are actually images. Yeah, it's they're not. Um, it's not just plain text. Yeah. It's also, uh, it would work better, so ideally, um, if we were actually broadcasting just from, and we were, it was like an online game, it's much easier to do that because you can have an editor um, that's like sitting there uh, playing with like the overlay settings, whereas for us, um, because we broadcast from PC TV, um, it's a little more difficult in that we would actually need an editor in the back uh, handling that stuff, like on the fly, so... So yeah, uh, yeah. Let's do let's do Granny Grindle. Um, so Granny Grindle uh, is uh, kind of a, a, an old lady, um, and since I do a bit of a more cartoony caricature style for Tales of Jamora, um, we're gonna do like a very exaggerated style. Um, so. Right, so we got overall body shape. Um, and then here's where we'll do, we'll kind of do uh, some finer features in here. So, all right, we'll get hands. Actually, uh, increase the opacity on this. All right, and she's got her, she's got her trusty walking stick, her cane. We'll just get some, kind of like some musculature. Big Harry Harry Potter like glasses.
since I'm a fan of capes and shawls and cloaks. So, uh, lots of long, flowing garb. Right, and then what we can do is we'll take this, we'll import into Illustrator. To do our oh, there we have. There we go. Right, and, and so um, the idea is to only use as, as many lines as you need. Uh, or rather, to use as, as few lines as I need um, to represent a face. So, I mean, to do a whole jawline, we can just use one line. Um, and just make sure that we get the cheekbone, and then it kind of does a little bit of concavity here uh, to represent like where the mouth comes in. And then Granny Grindle will give her a big, strong jawline. You know, her hair can be represented with just two lines, make a part in the middle, and then a little Granny Bun in the back. Couple extra extra lines in there to represent like wrinkles. games I want for Switch, maybe Virtual Console, or a game just re-released for Switch like Skyrim was. Um, here's what I would love. I would love Chrono Trigger. And not the one that's on Steam right now. Uh, the one that they released for the DS, because apparently the one for Steam is the mobile version, and they removed a whole bunch of stuff. Because um, I have Chrono Trigger for DS, but I don't want to go back to playing my DS. <laughs> uh... So yeah, that's that's what I would what I would ask for. Um, I would also ask for uh, um, you know it'd be nice to get uh, a bunch of Donkey Kong Country games, um, especially two Donkey Kong Country two is really good. Um, I would love to see that if they introduce um, uh, Super Nintendo games to Nintendo Switch Online. 
Um, especially since they left Donkey Kong Country 2 off of the Super NES Classic, as well as Chrono Trigger. So I would I would love to see those. Um, Golden Sun 1 and 2 would be interesting. Um, I played Borderlands, uh, and I mean, I, I played a lot of Borderlands 1. And then I got to the ending, and they just pulled the rug out from you with the ending, and that was enough that I never played it again. I was like, I'm done. Never again. And I haven't. And I won't. <laughs> like, I just had enough of a visceral reaction to that ending that I was like, I'm done with this franchise. And then they did story elements in the, the future games that uh, I don't agree with. And so uh, I was like, well, um, I don't need to play this game. And I will let other people have their fun with that. our take this bring it back in now we can actually turn these off But yeah, actually, I, I have been making use of the wishlist feature um, in the eShop. Um, I'm trying to remember what I have on there. Um, I think I have, like, Wargroove. Jeez, um, what else do I have on there? Um, I think I have my time at Portia or Portia or whatever. In there at the moment, but I haven't heard. I, but I've heard some that it's uh, somewhat not that great in some regards. So, I might uh, take that back off. I mean, really, I'm kind of waiting to see what they come out with at E3. Um, because I have more than enough to play right now to keep me busy. Um, and I know uh, Courtney was over on Saturday and we were playing multiplayer Stardew and that kind of just rekindled the whole thing for me. Um, let's see, what kind of a cloak does we I want to say that she's got, like, a nice, like, blue shawl. High Warlords for chumps. don't need PvP to be in competition. The fact that uh, you are playing 
So, multiplayer Stardew Valley is um, you share money. So, the real challenge then becomes... Um, oh, actually, we're going to do a different color for this one here. Uh, so, like, if, if there is a backpack upgrade, which gives you more inventory slots, right? It's 2,000 gold. You're on the same farm. You can't raid the farm because you also live there and work there. It's uh, essentially you get to set up little cottages on a farm, on the host player's farm. And that's where uh, players that join in live. Um, so, yeah. But, um, yeah, the fact that you share money um, kind of introduces a new dynamic. Uh, if by seizing the means of production you mean, I don't know, harvesting... Courtney's, um, God, what are they, parsnips? Because really, like, basic, this is Granny Grindle. Yeah. You, you, you missed Taco Monty. You didn't get here in time. I don't know what you're talking about, because so far, all she's done is help you guys. By that logic... You're all evil. Um, let's see, and let's, let's have this shawl be... Let's have this be a lighter blue. Um, I've never played any of the Batman uh, games, we'll say, because the last time I played a Batman game was like on the Game Boy. Um, so I don't know if I could speak to it as to whether it's too big or not. I'll get you there. I mean, the Switch runs uh, the latest Doom and Wolfenstein games, so I don't know if Arkham Asylum is a recent game. I mean, honestly, at this point, what I want is I just, like, and I'm glad that they are now, but I, I just want Retro to be working on something. Because it's unclear what they've actually been working on prior to Nintendo just restarting development on Metroid Prime 4. Because uh, they weren't working on it at that point. So I, I want to know what exactly they were they were working on. And my hope is that it was uh, a Donkey Kong game because they did a great job with Returns and Tropical Freeze. Okie dokie.
so. Um, yeah. I don't know. Virtual console. Um, well, uh, I think uh, what they would do is uh, they would only port games in which you don't need the second screen, if it happens at all. Um, I, I was going to be cheeky and answer that. Uh, I don't think DS Virtual Console will be a thing because the Virtual Console brand is dead. Um, and then I think uh, I think we'll just do like a like a gray woolen cloak um, because Nintendo's made it very clear uh, in their in their wording that they're not calling things Virtual Console. But that, that's just me being somewhat cheeky and pedantic. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, I mean, much for the same reason that... Uh, well, I guess they do have the... Joy-Con stuff that you could do Skyward Sword, but like... I don't know. Um, yeah, I just don't know if we'll see uh, Nintendo Switch Online expand to the DS. I mean, I think it would be great if they put out Game Boy games on it, as well as NES games. Um, Well, I just I think they need to be doing a lot more with Nintendo Switch Online. Uh, fun fact that I didn't realize until I listened to Nintendo Voice Chat is um, you can use the app, right? The the their app that they talked about that you're going to need to do voice chat and everybody forgot about because they were like it's terrible. Um, you can use that now to browse. Uh, stages and other content that people have produced in Smash Ultimate and you can then like find custom stages and then sync them to your game from your phone and then it'll automatically download onto your game so that's kind of cool I dig that Nah. No, it wasn't. They've actually, they've been uh, handing out, they've been pretty heavy handed with the bands. So all it takes is like a report and um, it's, it's actually cut down on a lot of the garbage that people were putting out initially. But there's been some really interesting stuff that people have made. Uh, that stuff is precisely why Miiverse got cancelled. And why uh, Swap Note got shut down. Um, so. And I know, honestly, uh, I don't want to have to deal with that. I don't want to have to deal with scrolling through uh, miles and miles of hot garbage when trying to find something decent.
Because you just you get to a certain point when just uh, phallus stage number 372 isn't funny anymore. And it's just tired. fill these in. So we aren't going to do a very uh, elaborate sort of shading scheme for Granny Grindle. Since we are... Uh, running long a little bit. Yeah. I think I might just leave. this. Sometimes it's okay to leave it as a as a flat color kind of thing. So there we go. Got Granny Grindle. So we are gonna save this out, um, and that is gonna wrap up uh, the stream for the night. Um, as I ran a little bit over to get this done, uh, but thank you for joining me for the 8-bit art stream. Uh, be sure to tune in. 8.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time uh, on Wednesday. Um, there is no 8-Bit Adventures podcast this week because uh, a bunch of us are, are going to be at a sort of benefit um, dinner buffet thing to benefit uh, the local TV station that we film Tales of Jamora at. So uh, we are just not doing the podcast, but instead we're going to be doing part three of my Let's Play series for Steam World Quest. So if you um, like Steam World Quest uh, or you just like Switch games, uh, come stop by then. Um, yes, it is a um, so uh, it's basically there's like 20 different uh, restaurants that are going to be in Pittsfield at Tavern at the A and um, tickets are being sold and proceeds will go directly to benefit uh, Pittsfield Community Television. Um, so it's like a fundraising dinner kind of a thing. Um, so tickets are $25 a person. Uh, so because it is meant to be a fundraiser and, uh, they have to make enough money to pay the various restaurants. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so check back here, 8.30 PM Eastern Daylight Time, twitch.tv slash 8bitadventures for part three of SteamWorld Quest. Then check back here on Thursday at 8 p.m. for SteamWorld Quest Part 4. So, uh, double feature of 8-Bit Adventures Game Night this week. Um, and if you want to check out more of my stuff, head on over to 8bitadventures.com. 
Um, and if you want to support that and uh, be able to see all of the, the Turtle and Terrier uh, Detective Agency comics, please consider become a patron at patreon.com slash 8bitadventures. You can become a patron for as little as $1 a month. Um, so that is a total of $12 a year. Um, and uh, uh, be sure to follow me on Facebook and Twitter. So um, with that, I'm going to head off for the night. So have fun, everybody. Happy gaming and enjoy your pie cake.